Hello, this is Professor Kitch. This is my last webcast in this series on the triaxial consolidated undrained test. This fourth part is on shear. Because this is the fourth part of the series, if you haven't seen the previous three parts, you should go back and watch them first. Well, hello, we're back in the lab now. We've been working on this test for the better part of a week and a half, and we're finally going to get to actually take our data today. So what we have going on right now, here's our specimen in our cell. And if you recall, it's been back pressure saturating now for the better part of a week. And what we're going to do today is do one quick B value check on this specimen before we, before we test it to see what the saturation level is. I think the last time we checked it, the B value was about 0.9, and we'd really like it to be up above 0.95, preferably 0.98 or higher. So we're going to do a B value check. And then once we're done with the B value check, we're going to place the entire cell here into the load frame, and then we're going to start our triaxial compression. So before we do anything else, let's talk about all the pieces that are here and make sure we understand what's going on. Um, here I have my, my triaxial panel. This column right here is connected to the cell. This is providing the cell pressure outside the specimen. This column right here is connected to the pore pressure inside the specimen. We're going to use that for our B value check, but after that, we're going to turn it off, and we're not going to be using that, that column at all because it's an undrained test during shear. Remember, consolidated, undrained. We have two measuring devices here on the cell itself. They both me measure pressure. Here at the top of the cell, this, this uh, transducer measures the pressure inside the cell, outside the specimen, inside the cell. This pressure transducer on the side is measuring the pore pressure inside the specimen. Right now, I have these three drainage lines open. These two will remain open the whole time. This is just a jumper to connect the bottom to the, of the specimen to the top so that the pressure is, it's, there was pore pressure is the same in the top of the bottom. This one again is connected to the panel. We'll leave it on for the B value check, but after the B value check, we'll turn it off. Then on the load frame itself, I have my load cell here in the center of the load frame. That's going to measure the force pushing down on the piston. And then at the very top, I have my linear displacement device. That's going to measure the movement of the load cell and the piston into this specimen, and it'll measure the actual displacement of the top of the specimen. So that's all the devices we have here. I almost forgot, I have my data acquisition device here. This is going to collect the data from all four of those transducers to determine what's going on during the test. So um, the process is, first we're going to do a B-value check. Once we finish our B-value check, I'll put this specimen in the cell. I mean, I'll put the cell inside the load frame, and we'll start our test. OK? All right, I'm ready to do my B-value check. Now, in order to start that check, the first thing I'm going to do, remember, is I'm going to turn off the, both the cell line and the drainage line at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to adjust the pressure at the top of each of these burettes by the same amount. And what I'll do then is I'll leave the drainage line closed. I'll open up the cell pressure. That'll put that additional stress that I uh, increased onto the specimen. And if the sample is saturated, then that pore pressure on the inside increase should be the same. If it's not, it'll be a little less than that. And so the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the pressures. Now, I have these shut off, so nothing's happening inside the specimen right now. So let me do that. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust this one. This pressure is right at um, 100 PSI, so I'm going to change it to 100. Uh, it's at 99.4, so I'm going to change it up 5 PSI. So I'm going to change it to 104.4, all right? And the back pressure line is at 79.5, so I'm going to change that to 84.5. Okay, so I've now increased the pressure on both the, the top of uh, the back pressure, uh, the top of the cell pressure, and the top of the pore pressure by 5 psi. Now I'm going to start a little routine here in our data acquisition system that will actually measure the B values for me this time. The last time we recorded them manually, but there's a little uh, B value check routine here, which is really nice. It makes it easy for us to do this test. Okay, so I have my drainage line closed here. I have 
uh, five extra PSI in these. First, I'm going to open just the cell pressure, put that extra five PSI outside the specimen. If it's saturated, the, the stress on the, the pore pressure on the inside will go up by five PSI. So here we go. And we're going to open this. I have to start my test. Okay, the test has started. I'm looking at the saturation B value check here. We'll let this run for just about two minutes. Right now it's looking pretty good. It's saying that the B value is 0.98. So if we stay there, we'll be in excellent shape. Okay, my B value checks at the end, so I'm going to open the pore pressure line to equalize the pressure. So I now have the same effective stress I started with. It's just 5 PSI higher on the inside and 5 PSI, uh, the, the, the outside, the, the cell pressure is 5 PSI higher than it was before, but the pore pressure on the inside is 5 PSI, so the effective stress hasn't changed. Uh, now my, um, I'm just going to let this e equilibrate while I do a couple other measurements I need to do. One of the first things I need, need to do is the measure how high the, the height of the specimen right now. Um, during consolidation, the specimen will have consolidated some and got shorter. So what I'm going to do now is, is push the piston down so it just contacts the top cap. It's, it's all the way in the top cap. And to, so it's just touching at the bottom there. And then I'll know that it's touching exactly the bottom. And then I'll measure this piston extension. If you remember, I measured, did that same measurement before I started consolidation. So the difference between those two will be how much the sample is shortened during consolidation. Now I've got a lot of pressure on this cell right now. So if I just loosen this lock thing, that piston is going to come flying up. So I have to, I have to hold on to this pretty tight um, when I loosen this, this lock nut here. Okay. And then what I have to do is just carefully Push this down in there until I just feel it touch. Okay, it's just touching the cap. It's all the way in the cap, touching. And now I can measure the piston extension here. All right. I'm going to record that number on my data sheet. If I can find my pen, I'll have to get my pen. So I've got that recorded. Get that out of the way. Okay, so I'm ready to test my specimen. I am going to turn off the drainage line. That's going to stay closed for the rest of the test. I'm not going to open it up until I'm completely done. So now what I'm ready to do is to put this into the, the cell and then start the test. Now, there's a bunch of force on this piston right now. And so uh, because the pressure in the cell is pushing it out. It's pushing on the end of the piston. And that force that's on the piston right now isn't being transmitted to the specimen. It's just the, the cell pressure trying to push the piston out. In addition, there's a linear bearing in here, which is a pretty low friction bearing, but there's some friction there. So part of the force that I push this on is going to friction there. And the way we deal with that is we are going to move this piston up a little bit above the, uh, the cap so that it has a, a little ways to travel down before it actually gets in contact with the cap and starts pushing on the specimen. And during the time that it's moving down, we'll be measuring the force on the piston. The program will measure that force. And then that's, we'll subtract that force from the total, the total force being applied to the piston in order to, to figure out how much of that force is actually being applied to the specimen itself. So the first thing I want to do is raise this up, and I'm just going to raise it up about five millimeters. And I'm just going to do that by eyeball. I can actually look inside the specimen to see. All right. So I have that all set up. Now I'm just going to put this into the frame here. I'm going to have to raise that frame up a little bit in order to get it to fit. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to slide that under there. Make sure that it's even right under the center of it. I'm just going to eyeball it from two sides to make sure that it's right under the center. All right, now I'm carefully going to lower this down so it's not quite in contact with this, but it's within, oh, uh, two or three millimeters of it. So I'm going to carefully do that. Okay, so that's all set. Now what I'm going to do is release the piston up till it pushes on the, the cap here, on the load cell, I mean. Okay, carefully release the piston. All right, this is loose and it's pushing on the load cell. All right, so now all I have to do is set up my test and get it to start running. So I'm going to go into the setup files. I've, I've already put all the specimen information in here. I gave it the size, the, the, di the diameter of the specimen. Oh, I have to calculate the initial height. So let me do that real fast because uh, I have to put the height of the specimen in there. So let me calculate that real fast. All right, so I've calculated the height of the specimen. I need to go back into specimen data and enter that. Enter it correctly. All right, it's going to ask me for a file name. Enter that. Okay, so I've saved all my specimen data. And now I just have to enter all the data for how fast this is going to load the specimen and how often it's going to take measurements. Um, I'll show you in another place how to calculate the shear rate. Uh, we want the shear rate to be fairly slow because there's going to be shear planes formed in the center of the specimen here, and we're going to have a shear-induced pore pressure there. Could be positive, could be negative. It depends whether the soil behaves in a dilative or a contractive fashion. But our measurement of the pore pressure is all the way out here, and that whatever change in the pore pressure occurs along that, that shear plane needs to be transmitted all the way through the specimen to the drains and out here, that takes a little bit of time. So we have a rule of thumb for how to calculate how fast we can shear the specimen based on how long it took to consolidate it. I'll present that uh, data to you in another part of the presentation. But I've already calculated that if we shear this at uh, 0 0.05, um, a strain rate of 0.05% per hour, we should be fine. So I'm setting this up to, to shear at 0.5 percent per hour. Um, I'm going to run it out to 15 percent strain. I have that all set in there, so this is all set. So now I'm just ready to start the test. So I'm just going to double check. I've got my uh, valve closed here. I've got the valve open here, so the cell pressure is on there, but, but the pore pressure is closed. I'm uh, reading the, the pore pressure inside and outside. That looks about right. So we're all ready to start the test. Um, and I'm just going to click Start. It's going to give me a warning here. Sorry. Better click the right button. I'm going to click Start. Uh, it's going to give me a warning here. It tells me to make sure this is unlocked. It is unlocked. So I'm going to click OK. And right now, I'm getting a message. It's measuring the piston correction. So right now, it's moving down at this, the, the piston is moving down at the same rate that we're going to shear. And right now, I can read on here that the force on the piston right now is 5.5 pounds. So that's the force that the cell pressure is pushing the piston out of the specimen. So it, it hasn't yet, con the, the, the piston in, at this part hasn't yet contacted the, the top cap, and so that 4.5 uh, pounds, it's actually up to 8 pounds, okay? All right, and it's off and running, and away we go. 
So uh, it's now going to start sharing. It's going to take all the data, and we'll come back uh, at 0.5% uh, per hour. It's going to take about 30 hours for it to run. So tomorrow we'll come back, and we'll be, uh, get the data, and we'll be ready to take the specimen apart. So this is a time-lapse review of the data that was collected by the data acquisition system. The entire shear part of the test took about 20 hours. It went out to 12% strain. I stopped it at 12% strain because it had already failed. In fact, you can see from the plot of the stress ratio Q over P that the peak strength occurred uh, just a little after 2% strain, maybe 2.5% strain, not quite up to 3. So these are the data that were collected. These data will be provided to you so that you can reduce them and do your own analysis of the data. Okay, uh, we were here yesterday. We started the shear test. It's run out to its uh, completion. We got 15% strain on the specimen. So now I'm ready to here to disassemble it. I'll go through this process really quickly. I'm not going to go through all the, the cleanup details and all that stuff. But just to let you know how the process goes, I'll do it pretty, pretty quickly here. The first thing I'm going to do is lock off the piston here so that it doesn't travel up. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the manual up uh, operation here to raise the load cell so it's above here and I can take the specimen out. Okay, that's good. I can now pull the entire cell out here. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is measure my piston, piston extension again because that will give me a second check on how, uh, the, how much um, displacement occurred during the test. It's just a backup. I've already got the data from the data acquisition system, but this is just a backup. Okay, so I need to record that number. All right, I've got that recorded. That's all the data I need to take, take right now. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. So, now I'm ready to disassemble the cell. Now I have to do this carefully because i got a lot of pressure in there right now. So, um, I'll go through that really quickly. I'll probably uh, fast track through a bunch of this. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is turn off my drain valves here at the bottom, and then I'm going to I'm going to vent my pressure here. Okay, and then I'm going to turn these off. I'm isolating the the burettes from everything else. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, release the pressure on the specimen first, so that everything's pushing inside. And I'm just going to take these lines to drain, so that when the fluid comes out of here, it just drains into the drain tank. And so I have, I'm going to open up this valve. This is my pore pressure side. I'm going to drain that first. Okay, that's drained. I can see that the pressure went to zero there, so I can turn this off. I'm going to turn this off. All right, now I am going to uh, do the same for the cell pressure. Make sure this is on drain. That's off. And I'm going to open this up and that'll vent the cell pressure. There we go. All right. So the cell pressure has been vented now. Now I can take this transducer off the top. Um, so now this line is going to drain. I'm going to hook up. Uh, a little pressure line to the top here to help push the water out so it goes out a little faster. So that should start pushing my water out of the top.
that's all out of there. So now I'm going to take my pressure line off there. Now this is really important. I've got 5 PSI in the cell right there, so I don't want to try and take it apart with that pressure on there. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this vent tube in the top and vent all that out of there. Okay, now I'm ready to disassemble my uh, specimen. I'll show you how to do that. All right, now I'm ready to disassemble my specimen. I've opened up all my drainage lines. I'm going to take this pore pressure line off. I've uh, removed the drain, the uh, cell pressure line. I'm going to remove this transducer here because I won't need that anymore. Um, and I, I've got my vent tube in the top so that I know that it's vented. And now I just need to loosen the rods on the cell, take them off, set them to the side. Okay, now take, raise that up. I can take the top cap off. Set that off to the side. You can take the cell off. Set that off to the side. I'm going to take my two drainage lines off the top. And now what I want to do is I want to get my specimen into this pan so I can do a, a weight of it afterwards. Um, I've already teared this pan, so I have a tear weight of this pan. Um, but I want to get the uh, moist and dry weight of the specimen itself here afterwards. So the first thing I do is I pull the membrane up and I take these two O-rings off the top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch the membrane and pull it down over the specimen. Pull all the way down to the bottom. I don't need the top cap for right now. Now the specimen has lots of loose water, free water on it, so I'm going to have to dab off the specimen. I'm also going to have to take all the filter paper off the specimen. So I'm going to pull this all the way down to the bottom cap, take the specimen out. There's our specimen. Now I'm going to take all the filter strips off. All right, so now I'm going to just dab the outside of the specimen with a paper, a paper towel to get rid of the excess water that's on it. Just real quickly, I don't want to take any soil away. All right. Take the filter paper off the top. A little bit of loose water off the top. Take the filter paper off the bottom. Free water off the bottom. Let me get you a look at our specimen here. Okay, there's our specimen tested. We don't see any clear shear planes in this specimen. This is an example where it just bulged in the middle. Sometimes you'll see clear shear planes, but not in this case. Okay, so I'm just going to set that specimen in my tray that was pre teared. I'll take it over. Get it put on the scales, get a weight of it moist, put it in the oven, get a weight of it dry, and I'll be able to determine the water content and all that good stuff at the end of the test. So that's our whole test. I've collected all the data. Uh, if you're doing this test for your lab, um, your instructor will provide you the data for the test so that you can reduce it and do all the calculations. Uh, if you remember, we tested uh, the soil at four different confining stresses. We uh, tested at a confined stress of 10 PSI, 20 PSI, 30 PSI, and 40 PSI. So that should give you the ability to draw four different more circles at failure, and you'll get a more Coulomb envelope for the, for the soil, and you can figure out whether it's uh, got a cohesion intercept or not and what the friction angle of the soil is. So that's our consolidated undrained triaxial test. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I hope this is instructive to you, and have a good time with soil mechanics. Soils are fun.